nurses as essential workers are under, uh, we're now in a state of emergency. My name is Elizabeth Lawlish. I'm a registered nurse. I am on what they call a, a medical surgical floor at Strozier Hospital, which is the public sector hospital here in the city. We serve a lot of people of color, a lot of undocumented, a lot of people without insurance. We work with a lot of patients that come from the county jail. We had, we had very minimal staffing as far as nurses and even when it came down to um, all sorts of healthcare uh, professionals, doctors, respiratory therapists, aides, housekeeping, everything that helps to make a hospital run. Um, it was always about the bottom line and money. And so what the pandemic has really um, driven home is how vulnerable we are and how much um, our employers don't really seem to care or have a plan uh, when it comes to our safety in particular. You not only have to deal with patients with an unknown virus, right? One that does not have a cure to it um, and possibly um, expose yourself, but we aren't being provided the proper, what we call PPE. There wasn't a surplus in the hospital industry of the way there should be, you know, more supplies and more things. So. We're being asked to reuse those in some instances. I mean, that's what's happening at my hospital. They're asking us to reuse them and put them in a paper bag. And we're not even seeing the top of the line in the United States, I'll be honest with you. When you compare it to what China had and Italy has and even Spain and all across the world where this pandemic has been going is we don't, we don't have that equipment. We're having to fight. So you not only have to care for really ill patients in an unknown illness, mm. you have to fight your employer in the immediate and say, you know, you need to give this to me. And if you don't, I'm not going to do this. And it really comes down to a situation of life and death. People have really put themselves on the line um, around the world to be able to fight this, to have it turn back around on on me. It's, it's really, um, it's, it's heart wrenching to be, to be perfectly honest with you. It's, it makes me feel that I've never been in this situation. I've always known that the system is corrupt and has done this throughout history to people, which is capitalism doesn't care about ordinary people, but to be faced with that in your day to day in this, in the midst of this really is profound. I feel like the community that's formed around me right now is, is the basis of something better. You know, and, and I, I deeply appreciate everybody who has reached out and is watching for me and giving me food and all those sorts of things that I think we see in society as a whole um, across, the, across the globe is where people are reaching out to help each other, ordinary people are. My small story, amplify that times a hundred times. I don't even know how many hundreds or thousands of healthcare workers currently are out of the system because we're on quarantine or positive. I have many other co-workers who are sicker or showing symptoms who I have in particular one um, she was our chief steward who just got tested but she was having you know chest pain for about a week nobody should have to wait like that so many healthcare workers get knocked out due to exposure so it just decreases um, the ability for the people who are, you know, like my coworkers this week are working without me, right? And it means that they're, they're actually being staffed short. Um, and when you do that, you also increase the likelihood that they could be exposed. The system cannot function without us. Fine, you can make more ventilators. If you don't have healthcare workers to put them onto patients, it's not going to serve you. It's, it's of no good. I have a coworker who has had to leave her family because she's afraid she has an elder uh, elderly in-law that lives with her and her children and so she has taken an apartment in the city. I mean her children literally asked her when are we going to see you again and she said maybe in three months. I think it's driven home to a lot of people that I work with um, just how little we're valued you know right. as human beings in in this in in this health not in the healthcare industry which is one of the largest money makers in the United States. I think it's Ne it's like 17% of the gross domestic product. It's next to the military was the biggest profit maker, which was why it was so hard to fight to change it. The 
um, response from the federal government and from the Trump administration um, has been very weak. I mean, my coworkers are enraged by what he's saying. It's like, who is this man who wants to think that come Easter or at some point, we're just gonna start things up again because it isn't going to get better and it's going to sacrifice thousands, tens of thousands, if not millions of lives, and that this is an insane plan and that he should not be in charge of anything. We cannot function if society opens back up again, right? For the profits of whom? I think the Democrats have been, as they typically do, they make a lot of noise, they try to differentiate themselves and then do very little, really, to fight for what we need. They, too, want to maintain the economy. They, too, want to make sure that the corporations yeah. don't tank. We are going to be going into a major recession. And so they want to keep that going. But you can't do that when you have a pandemic. This is the biggest occupational has disaster in probably U.S. history, yeah. what's happening in the healthcare sector right now. That the corporations who put us in harm's way should be the people who pay for it because they're the criminals who have allowed this to happen. Nationalizing the healthcare industry so that we have a generalized plan um, is really, you know, something that we need. And if that's not going to come from the top, which it certainly isn't going to, and I believe never has, it's going to have to come from the bottom and from us organizing. My union, um, I'm in National Nurses United, has been fighting for not only that we need PPE, that's moved on to now that we've got so many people who are going out, who are positive, being either on quarantine or are positive with corona and have to be out um, for uh, at least 14 days, that we fight for them to stay out for 14 days. The Centers for Disease Control is trying to roll that back to bring us in sooner mm. if we don't have symptoms. Appalling. And I can just wear a surgical mask. And I just said, what are you talking about? Nurses as essential workers are under, uh, we're now in a state of emergency, which means they can, you know, attempt to have us do overtime. And they are also retraining workers who don't usually work in like the emergency department or my, where I work in medical surgical to help us out. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to protect those people. We need ventilators. We need ICU beds. We need old hospitals to be reopened and retrofitted, you know, so that all of that build um, into upping the capacity um, of the ability for the healthcare system to survive this. We're in coalition with the teachers union and some of the other unions, including the Service Employees International Union here, and a lot of community groups around people getting paid sick leave that we um, have no evictions, that, like I said, there are rent strikes going on, that rent is hell, um, that people, you know, uh, different workers in, who are still considered essential um, actually uh, have protection, like the transportation workers, like Amazon workers who are still working to deliver because nobody can leave their house. People are trying to figure out in creative ways how to actually respond and put pressure um, and stay safe all at the same time. We have protests outside with people six feet apart. They're healthcare workers. And what we're talking about is having press conferences. We've been doing this for the last week, week and a half. I've also heard of some car protests that have been happening as well, like in New York um, at an immigration detention center, I believe, earlier in the week where people are, you know, driving around honking their horns. Um, in, in sort of oh. a caravan of, you know, cars. Those sorts of things, I think, we're figuring it out. I know that there have been also some job actions, little ones, in my hospital where we've had nurses, um, especially in the emergency room, which is where a lot of people come in, right? Um, if we don't have the personal protective equipment that we need, um, the nurses are saying, okay, once you get it, I'll be in the break room, you can come and find me, and then I'll work. But I know people are fighting and I know people are trying to really, and people are winning things, which is, I think, incredible challenge, but it's really amazing how people are rising to the occasion.